Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of the Giant Paladarium build series for my Mountain Heart Dragons. In part 1 of this series, we drilled the Exoterra and created the waterfall. In today's video, part 2, we're going to build the background and add the hardscape. Before we go any further, allow me to thank Exoterra for sponsoring this entire build and for giving me everything I need to create the perfect environment for my Mountain Heart Dragons. Exoterra makes quality products for our pet reptiles to make them feel at home. Okay, let's build the background. The first thing that we did was get some rigid insulation board. We then measured the size we need and cut it to where it fit on the background. These foam boards can be carved out in many different ways to create texture. We used a wire wheel drill attachment to do this. We first created larger grooves and then went over it all again to give the entire background a textured look. The idea was to have it all look like a natural rock background. We then siliconed on the background and then filled in any gaps or cracks in the background with expanding foam. Then we covered it all in dry lock. We made sure all the edges were painted and cleaned up and then put silicone around the edges. This was done after putting the dry lock on because dry lock will not stick to silicone. We then built a foam box to put around the PVC overflow box. However, the flow of the water was still too strong, so we built a ramp to redirect the water into a little pool. And then, using the drill, we made some holes in the pool, which allowed the water to run down the wall, and this created a nicer flow for the waterfall. And reduced the noise of the waterfall, which is actually pretty important. Once the entire background was covered in dry lock, we let it dry for a few days and then came back in to add the hardscape. We decided how we wanted to place the cork branches, and then foamed them in place using expanding foam. We then used painter's tape to hold them in place. Once the foam had dried, we went back in with the Dremel and shaved off all the smooth surfaces, which made it look more natural and will allow the dry lock to stick to it better. We again waited a few more days and then went back in for a second coat of dry lock. Once the second coat of dry lock had dried, now we could add the touches. Here you can see Greg from Beneath the Canopy Exotics using a method called dry brushing. He adds a bit of colored paint like green paint and brown paint to the brush and then dries it off with a paper towel and then paints the background with it. This added even more texture to the background and made it look more natural, almost as if moss was starting to grow on the rock. Once this was completed, we let it dry for about one week and then the waterfall was turned on. At this point, I decided that the depth of the land area would not be enough to create a drainage layer and to have a deep enough substrate layer. We decided to cut up more rigid insulation board and cut it down to where it would fit inside the land area. Once again, we used the wire brush to create texture on the foam. We siliconed it in place and then painted it with dry lock. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up part two of the build here Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the rest of this build series. We still need to plant the terrestrial area and set up the aquarium, as well as talk about all the electronics, the UVB, the lights, the heating, the misting system, and the filter. Thank you for watching, and see you on the next one.